Well, let's talk a little bit more about the classical food web and look at it in a little bit more detail. It's really based on collections of organisms that we can collect with nets. The classical food web is really the net food web, whether it's a plankton net, which has a mesh around the size of uh, stockings, or whether it's a fish net that's catching larger, larger organisms. So as humans dragged nets through the ocean, they collected organisms that could be studied and counted and weighed and, and looked at, and in that the idea and our knowledge and understanding of the classical food web came about. It consists, as I said before, of large phytoplankton, and these are ones that we've talked about before. The diatoms with their silica skeletons, the dinoflagellates responsible for bioluminescence and red tides, and the coccolithophorids, the organisms that produce calcareous uh, skeletons. They also consist largely of the crustacean zooplankton, things like copepods and krill, small planktivorous fishes like sardines and anchovies, and also all the different kinds of carnivorous fishes that we know, the jacks and mackerels, the tunas, the sharks, the toothed whales, all those big fish that we've subsequently fished out. They're all part of what we call the classical food web. This is a food web, of course, that feeds us it's the one, for that reason largely, that has received the greatest attention as well. And here's what it looks like. This is an illustration um, from a book published in the 1940s, I believe. And it kind of illustrates the kind of thing we just talked about. Here's the diatoms and dinoflagellates. Here are some classical types of crustacean zooplankton. Here's different kinds of copepods. Here are some different species of uh, crustacean zooplankton. Here are some other kinds of organisms that we find in the ocean as well. Things that are less familiar to us. Here's the seros, the larvations, um, those kinds of things. Larval mollusks, larval barnacles, those kinds of things. And small fishes, small planktivorous fishes, as well as carnivorous fishes um, as well. And in this particular food web here, we're really looking at the kinds of organisms that are important for producing herring. And herring being, of course, a, an important food fish, particularly in Europe, where a lot of these early studies were done. But we could do the same kind of thing for tuna fish, marlin, sharks, any of those kinds of things. Again, the classical food web.